hello guys and welcome to today's video so in this video uh, we are going to make a calculator with the help of python right but uh, this is not going to be some command line calculator we are going to make an uh, graphical user interface calculator so we'll make a small ui a very simple ui of our calculator and we'll try to implement basic functionalities of a calculator into it right so let's start with it so let me first show you what we are going to make and how it will look so what we want to do we want to make a calculator which looks something like this so from over here we can insert some numbers and we can perform some tasks right so we want to make this type of calculator <coughs> so when we want to make this kind of calculator uh, we'll use make the use of tk inter uh, in our python correct which provides a toolkit for gui so for this uh, particular session we are going to use vs code we are going to write our code into our vs code so create a folder inside your vs code create a file uh, so we'll create a new file from over here we'll say calculator dot pi yeah then we'll say from tk inter quote asterisk right so uh, we are what we are going uh, doing over here we are importing tk inter we are importing all the packages from tk inter right so now what we have to do we have to initialize the class of tk correct so what we'll say we'll say object is equal to uh, we'll say tk class so now our objects <coughs> object in initialize right and uh, one thing one more thing you write over here uh, which will will say that it is your main loop so what will say <coughs> main loop so your program will run so after writing this much just hit enter and you will get a gui look something like this right now we'll edit this but you will get this now after just importing and initializing the object of tk enter correct so uh, now what we want to do so let's say uh, we created a gui right a small box now let's say we want to give some heading to it correct for that what we can do we can say object dot title and we can say uh, calculator correct so now we have given the title uh, okay let's use string. it doesn't matter you can use of them yeah now let's say next thing what we want to do we want to say what's the size of your uh, you know the dialog box we are getting we want to make this size correct so for that what we can say we can say geometry let's create a 500 by 500 box correct uh, then let's say we have now given the size of the box now let's say uh, if the user should can uh, resize it or not so let's say we don't want user to resize it correct so we'll say object dot resizable will pass 0 0 as a parameter so uh, user cannot resize it correct now do one more thing let's say configure and now what we want to do we want to give a background color of it so you can use background property and you can just say i want that background should be white correct then check again how it is looking so now check we are getting a larger box with white background correct so now this much is done now what we want to do let's say <coughs> we will first do uh, the answer where we'll get the answer correct so for that what we can say we can say result is equal to and then we'll say we'll use the label uh, label class and inside label class what should we pass so inside it will pass our object correct and next thing what we'll pass we'll say what should be the text so first let's just pass some random text for for now let's say zero want to pass zero correct then let's say we have provided some text right uh, now let's say what do we want as our background color let's say my background color correct so try to run okay so we have created an object right now now what we want to do uh, in this video we are going to make use of grid correct so we'll say result is equal to and then we can say uh, result dot grid 
and inside grid what we pass we pass rows and columns where do we want to put it so let's say zero and column is also equal to zero column also zero so it will be on the top left corner correct so now let's say what do we want to pass okay let's do this much and try to run this and let's see how it is looking okay so we are getting zero somewhere over here right now correct let's say uh, we provide some padding to it right padding we want top left right so we'll provide padding as somewhat 150 30. we are getting a result somewhere over here lesson so over here we'll get our answer correct so now we have provided where we want our put our answer but the text is currently looking too small so what we can say we can say result and you can make use of one more uh, function which is your result dot config and over here what we want to do we want to increase the size of it correct so how we can increase the size of it so we can say font then we can say which font do we want to use we can say let's say want to use font and uh, let's increase the size as well let's say i want my size to be and say i want to make it bold now we are getting a much larger text just looking good correct so now let's say uh, we have done this now what we want to do we want to create some buttons correct so for that what we can say we can just create buttons we can say button equal to uh, and inside button how we can create button in tk finder we can say button class and in button class what do we pass we pass our object then uh, after passing our object what we want to do we want to put some text in it right let's put some random text for now then after putting text what we can say uh, so let's say we want to provide some background color so here we have to pass hex color so let's say inside button go to your google chrome hex color code and you can make use of this website so from over here let's say we want some off white color copy this huh? paste it over correct so now we have uh, our background color as well then we'll provide with her uh, font color so you can make use of fg attribute you can just say black the font will be black now correct so now let's provide some width and height to our button let's say uh, we are providing 9 height we are providing as 2 correct so now height and width is given okay so we insert some more attributes not necessary let's see how it look we have created our button and now what we have to do we have to put where do we want want our button to be inside our gui correct so what you can say you can say button dot grid you can just specify rows and columns so we want it in our zero row and uh, column we want it on the column right coming above it so let's uh, we have to give row as one over here okay so now we are getting our button somewhat like this so it is looking nice correct so now our button is uh, created but the font is still looking a little bit small so what we can say we can make use of button dot config and we can just pass our font will make use of the same font and try to run this okay so let's lessen the size 10 10 is looking good okay 
10 is looking good correct so now we have created a uh, size of our button so let's say we don't want bolts because bold is not looking very good let's in size okay so now it's looking perfect and this button is also clickable correct so uh, go to your windows we'll see how our calculator app looks like in windows so this is how your uh, app looks like so we start from 7 8 9 4 5 6 1 2 3 right so uh, we'll say we have created this button right now you observe we have created the first button this one we have created this one we are not going to create this scientific buttons you can do that later uh so over here what we can do we can just say this number is seven correct then we'll create eight nine four five six one two three and all the buttons correct let's name our buttons so let's say this was our seven correct let's say text is seven to run now what we have to do we ha just have to create some more buttons correct let's create some more buttons seven as eight here we'll give it And in the text also we have to make now look how it look how it is look okay so we haven't changed the value of our columns right that's why it's not coming we'll change the value of our columns okay so now we are getting our buttons like this right so it is looking nice uh, so now let's say after nine we'll create one more in this row only let's say add column is your third column here we'll see okay so now it's look also if you want to give some more width you can let's see how it Now it's looking proper now what we want to do we want to insert two more rows correct so uh, what we'll say just add a comment over here that right? the first row yeah and copy this same code copy this same code <coughs> paste it over here and say this is your second row yeah so in second row we'll just change the value of our numbers so let's say four five six yeah and uh, say it is subtraction now and in all of these buttons what we have to change we have to change the value of row because it's the second row now correct then we'll change the text values say it is four five six but here it will say it is minus right try to run this we are getting something like this copy the same code again and we'll create the last row Uh, let's say in this what we do one it is multiplication
wide multiplication yeah change the value of rows change the value of the texts one Now we are getting some. Let's see how the calculator looks that we get an understanding. Okay, so over here, what will provide will provide zero equal to and let's say division. Okay, so copy this one more time. Let's say are zero. Are uh, this is our clear button that we can erase the stuff from our screen yeah. after clear. Uh, we also have to do division, correct? We'll just say division. Let's remove white division over here. Change the value of the columns. Value of text over here. Try to run. Okay, so we are getting something like this now. So, what we can do now is uh, let's say increase the size of this division. Let's make it 20. So our grid will be looking good. What we can do? Let's leave it be for now. And uh, inside our result, what we can say over here, you can provide call span and we'll say call span of 5. Yeah. Now we'll get something like this. Right, so this much is done now. So now what is happening? We gave a call span over here, right? So because of that, this text is coming in the front at the center. So what we can say, we can say, uh, let's do it later. First, uh, what we have done till now, we have created a GUI, correct? We have created a GUI and we have put some uh, numbers like uh, buttons in it. And a area where all text will be printed. So now what is happening over here? We gave it a call span so that if the number increases, our layout won't, uh, you know, stretch out. So because of that, uh, we gave a call span in the result. So now what we want to do? It is coming inside the center, correct? What we can say uh, that I want my text to be on the left hand side of the screen. So for that, what you can use? You can use the sticky attribute, and you can. Uh, specify it as west correct yeah so now it is looking properly so now uh, designing part is done now what we have to do we have to add some functionalities correct so in calculator if you observe what is happening over here uh, let's say if user clicks on any number a number should come over here right let's say if user clicks on 7 7 should come over here if it if it clicks second time 77 should come over here so if he clicks on any number, numbers should come over here. So our result variable will be changed. And if he clicks on in any operator, uh, this should be cleared and another number should be inputted. Correct. So now we'll implement those functionalities. Correct. First of all, what is happening? Right now we have provided zero over here. So let's provide some empty string only over here. So uh, it is not noticeable. Correct. So now what we want to do? Uh, first of all, let's say if user is click on clicking on any object so for like sorry any button on any but button which contains a number for that what we are going to create we are going to create a uh, digit function and inside this uh, user is clicking on a button right so we'll say digit it is passing and for now uh, what we want to do we want our 
text to be changed right so let's create a local variable and inside this uh, what we'll say result and uh, which property of result we want to take text property of result correct we want this at text 7 so now current is holding 7 so now what we'll do we'll create one more variable and inside this variable what we are going to do we are going to uh, add these numbers what we'll say we'll say current which is holding 7 right now we'll say plus and string of uh, what we'll say we'll say digit which is passed pass to the function correct so uh, what will happen let's say if user has created uh, clicked on 7 so 7 will be stored inside this new correct now what we can say we can say result dot config and what we want to achieve with this config is uh, we we can we want to change the text property of it correct what we want a text property to be to hold the new number correct so now our function is created now what we have to do uh, we have to call this function correct when the button is clicked so uh, how you can call a function on a button click is so go to this button property you can specify command so we have created a function and we have to pass some uh, parameters to it correct so what you can use you can use lambda for it so you can say lambda and you can say digit and inside this digit what we have to pass we have to pass 7 why because this button is containing 7 only correct try to run this okay so what is happening it is giving the object of it so why it is giving the object of it because we have made some mistake in our digit function correct so let's go through it what we did we did the property of result text property then what we did we did new is equal to current storing the text property and we are saying str of digit correct okay yeah so uh, why it is giving this so i have created a digit over here instead of digit we have to provide digit only correct because we have taken the parameter as dig correct so then we have called this function over here try to run this one more time okay now we are getting our answer into this so now what we want to do we'll add this for all of this correct for all of the functions so just copy this function call and add add it inside every buttons so here we'll add we'll just change the parameters because but button as button as buttons are containing different numbers right so which number is this okay this is addition so let's not call this function for addition because it's taking a number only 7 then we'll say 4 say 5 say 1 Okay, so now we have done this. We have created a uh, whenever uh, on each click of every button, it will be displayed over here. Seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two. Correct. So, uh, why we did this addition over here? Now you'll get it because it will uh, store the current value and it will add the newly clicked value. Correct. So if we remove this, what it will do? It will uh, give only the newly clicked number correct because of that we are doing addition correct so now what we want to do uh, when the clear button is clicked what we want is uh, the display should be cleared right so let's create a function so let's say def clear and what we can just say we can say result dot config and we'll just make our text property empty correct so our result will be cleared
so we have uh, made a clear function now what we'll do let's go to our clear button and inside clear button we'll pass our command say lambda so there is one more thing what you can do uh, if you don't want to use lambda and if uh, you don't have to pass any parameters what you can say you can just say command is equal to clear so it will call the function automatically is the clear button only now it should work okay so now our clear button is working so up till now what is happening uh, whenever we are clicking on a button a button is clicked and uh, some number is printed onto our display so now what we want to do we now will print the operators correct when operator is clicked what should happen let's so when an operator is clicked so let's say we have we are doing 88 plus something some 88 we are doing this correct so what should happen let's say we are clicking on 88 correct so after we click on this plus this should be cleared first correct then the new new number should be entered over here right so what will happen if we do this clear we'll lose our number correct so what we want have to do we have to create some variable and store it inside that variable so that we can we can access it later to perform the addition correct so three things we have to do over here first we'll make this clear correct then we'll uh, do this addition and then we'll uh, make uh, then user can enter the second number correct so to uh, perform that what you can uh, say let's create some global variables so you can say uh, operand 1 operand 2 and uh, we have created two operands now and operator also will create store the operator and we'll just initialize for now correct now that it is initialized what we'll do we'll create a function for this operator so that the operator can perform its operation we can say operator like this we can just pass our operator so inside this function what we first want to do we want to access the global variables so we'll say operand 1 operand 2 our operator correct now we are accessing this three operands or we don't need operand 2 over here but let's uh, keep it for now so we can say now what we want to do uh, we'll first uh, get our operand 1 and inside operand 1 what we want to do we'll store the current value of the display correct but it is storing an uh, string variable so to convert it from string to integer we'll use the integer and we can say result dot uh, we can say result and text property of text property of result Correct. So now uh, the current value of our display will be stored inside the operand one. Correct. And in operate operator, what will store? Operator, this op will be stored because it is passed as a parameter to the function. Correct. So this operator will be stored. And now what we want to do? Uh, we can just call the call the clear function, or we can say result dot config. You can say text your empty space so you can do this or you can call the clear function which we have already created correct so now this operator function is created now what we want to do uh, we want to call this function to our operator correct so which operator so this addition is first we can say we can say command equal to lambda okay what we named our function Named it operator, which that's this because uh, we have this variable names over here. We'll say get operator, get operator. What will pass? We'll pass as string plus we have created our uh, operator class, operator function. Operator function 
working for now okay so what we'll do we'll uh, call this operator function inside our operators give it a subtraction what we have we have multiple then so one more button which we have forgot to put is here equal to button let's copy this function call from over here. Uh, let's change the name of this okay here will text is provided the wrong column name See? okay so now we are getting all of our right now what we did uh, we have also created the operator now we are getting the operators now what we have to do we have to perform the uh, calculation correct so for that we'll, what we'll do we'll create a function and we'll perform some addition subtraction and division into it so what we'll say we'll create a function so we'll say uh, def say get result and inside this get result uh, what we'll do we'll perform some uh, addition or let us subtraction so first we have to take all of the variables your operand 1 operand 2 and your operator correct so after this uh, numbers have been called inside this get operation function what we did we uh, assign the value of first number into operand one so now the display must uh, the result variable must be having the second number correct so we have to store this second number so we'll say operand two is equal to uh, and then what we can say result and we'll say the text property of that result correct so now we have our uh, second uh, variable also so yeah this is string so we have to convert this into integer okay so now we have our both of the operands and our operator so now what we will do uh, we'll check the conditions so what we'll check so we'll say if the operator which is there so we'll we'll say operator which is there is equal plus so if it is plus what we'll do we'll take both of the numbers and we'll just make the addition of it right we can say result dot config and inside config what we want to change we want to change the text property of it inside text property what we want to do uh, we want to make some addition so we can just say uh, operand 1 plus operand 2 and again this is your integer now because we have converted them into integer so now we have to change it to string correct now we have changed it to string. let's say if it's not uh, addition what else it could be so can be your subtraction so if it's subtraction what we'll do we'll just perform the subtraction of both the numbers correct it's not subtraction what will it be be let's say this multiplication we'll perform the multiplication of it and if that's not also the case else what will it be it will be division so we'll perform the division of both the numbers yeah so now we have performed our operations right 
now uh, what we have to do we just have to call this function and when do we want to call this function when the button will uh, button equal to is clicked so where have we created this button equals here we have created you can just say command is equal to get result correct so now let's try to run this let's say 8 plus 9 70 let's say minus equal to 15 here screen okay let's say 8 division 1 8 correct let's say 9 p into 33 okay so all of our operators and numbers are working so this is how you can create a uh, calculator using uh, gui you can use this gui with the help of tk enter and you can create this so now you know all the basic functionalities and how you can create that and how you can access that how you can create a button how you can create this result right so now what you have to do just create a full fledged calculator and inside which you just have to insert some more functionalities like scientific notations and all so it is the same only just you have to create some more buttons and you have to perform actions according to it correct so i hope this video uh, by seeing this video you got something new to learn and this is a fun little project that you can do and also try to give some give it some time and create a full fledged calculator application so if you like this video kindly leave a comment down in the section if you have any doubts and also like this video uh, we'll share more content like this so i'll see you in the next video bye